거의 진짜 굉장히 집중해서 잘 들어주셔서 너무 감사하고요. 지금은 그냥 편안하게 네. 그러니까 저, 여러분들에게 뭔가 드리고 싶었는데 그러니까 교수님이랑 얘기를 해보니까 그래도 그냥 드리는 것보다 질문을 해주시면 은 드리면 은좀 좀 재밌잖아요. 그래서 여러분들 저희 대표이사님께 뭐 물어보고 싶으신 거 있으시면 편안하게 물어보세요. 아무런 뭐 여자친구 있어요. 뭐 이런 거 괜찮습니다. 네. 편안하게 물어보시면 제가 어떤 질문도 괜찮으니까 제가 여기 준비한 것들 드리도록 하겠습니다. Okay, so Q&A time. They will ask you some, some questions. Difficult questions? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's see if I can answer it. Yes. How old are you? <laughs> oh, that is a very difficult question. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Should I tell the truth? Or <laughs> I'm 42. 42 years old. So, 42, uh, married, two kids. Uh, I have a boy, five years old, a girl, 12. She's a ballerina. And that's it. I'm originally from Brazil. I'm also an immigrant to Canada. So I moved to Canada 12 years ago. Back home, I used to be a lawyer. I practiced law for more than 10 years. And then once I knew Canada, I decided to move up. You know, move to Canada, have a different life. I believe just like a teacher. You know, we have our home country, like the place we were born, from my perspective, and the country of your heart which is the country that you choose to live. So in that case, Canada is the country of my heart. You know, as your teacher is South Korea. Right? Yes, I think so. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. That's a good start. <laughs> yeah, right? why, why not? <laughs> yes. So regarding the like a loan in Canada, yes. for example, like a, he want to like a loan about like fifty k yes. dollar from the like government bank. So like a, is it so difficult for people to like a, how can I say get back pay back? Yeah, could yes. you explain? Sure, sure. Do you need? <웃음> 네, 빨리 질문하시면 선택을 하실 수 있고요. 어떤 선택 괜찮아요? 네. That's a, actually a very good question. Okay, so we have to we have to plan together. Okay, so if you tell me I want to go for a master degree in Canada, I would never recommend you to apply straight to the master degree. Why is that? Because it's high competition. And that's going to cost you about, for MBA, for instance, Master in Business Administration, about 50,000 to 60,000 Canadian dollars. As international students, you have to pay everything up front. Okay, just take 60,000 dollars and make the payment, right? So we don't recommend you to do that. That would be a very good commission for us, okay? But we don't recommend you to do that. Think. Uh, what the government wants is they want you at first to stay there, okay? So they want to help you to stay in Canada. So with that in mind, I would go just for a post-graduation program, which would cost you the tuition $15,000, okay? So one four or one quarter of the total amount you, you would pay. With, within that first year, you go for post-graduation, you improve your English, you learn how to work in Canada, you, you learn how the society works, like cultural stuff, right? So after one year, you qualify to apply for a work permit, okay? Working for six months after finishing post-graduation, you become permanent resident. As permanent resident, you'll be able to apply for the scholarship. And that's when you plan for the MBA. Because you don't pay as international student, you pay as local student. So the price drops to $25,000. Then you contact the government. It's very hard to contact the government. 
you go online, fill out the form and press enter. And then attach your letter of acceptance. That's it. So they know that you qualify and they know that you were you are accepted to that program. So in two days you get a letter from the government saying, okay, you are approved for the scholarship. So then you start school. You take that letter, go to school and say, government will pay for my education. Okay, so then this is the good and easy part, right? Then is the hard part, pay it back, right? If it's a loan, you gotta pay it back. So when you finish your program, there's nobody knocking at your door. Nobody knocking there, hey, I need my money back. This is not the way it works. You finish your program, you have six months to get in touch with the government, to get back to the government. And so you have six months to go back to the government and say, okay, I finished my program, thank you very much, now I wanna pay you back. Okay, but, you know, I recently graduated from school, I'm young, I'm poor, I can only pay a hundred bucks per month. Government says, it's fine, that's okay. It's how much you can afford, right? So it's up to you how much you wanna pay in the way you want to pay. Of course, most of the students, uh, uh, you must be reasonable, right? And you must be aware that many other students need the money as well to study. So, I would recommend you to pay it back faster. But you have to pay in a, in a way you can afford, okay? So nobody's forcing you, nobody, you know, go there, take your bike, nothing like that. Tom, <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Excellent, excellent question as well. By the way, your accent's pretty good. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Oh, next time you remind me to bring more of that. I think okay? so, yeah. I think this is the, they are the favorite. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so answering your question, you're right, okay? Not everyone gets a job when they, are, they get out of college. And I don't know in Korea, but North America, the, um, let's say, the network you built along the way is very important, okay? So many students, they go to, to Canada or they go to the United States, they go to college, dorm, dorm, college, college, dorm, dorm, college, or college, home, home, college, okay? And uh, when they are off in a spring break or when they have a vacation, they take the flight the very next day, come back home, stay for two months, and then they go back home, college, college, home. That's it. What I'm trying to say is to be able to find a good job in North America, you must build the connections, the network, right? So on your break, on your vacation, find a summer job. Start, you know, the relationship with a company. Go uh, work as an intern, find a job as an intern, so you get some, some work experience and also you build the relationship with people. So these schools, they are prepared to help you to find a summer job, okay, while you're studying. As well, the, when you're attending a college, either undergrad or post-graduation, you have the right to work 20 hours per week. So I'm not saying you have to work 20 hours per week, but at least two days a week, get a part-time job, you know? So you understand how the, the job market works. You understand what is required from you to get a job and to grow in your career. If you just go to school and do nothing, at the end of the program, 
you have nobody to call, right? You have no connections, no network, no experience, okay? Imagine yourself finishing a two years college with no work experience. Then you grab your, your curriculum and knock at the door and say, you should hire me. They look at you like, why? Just because you have a college, right? No, you should do the other way around, okay? You should knock at the door and say, remember me? I worked for you for free in a summer, summer job? Yes. Was I a good, good employee? So I'm here, now I graduate. So I'm willing to do more. Remember what I did? I participated in that program, that program with you. You know, I carried the box in the summertime. So now I'm here. I need your help. I need, you know, I want to work more for you. I, I have this, this, and that to offer you. So this is how people get job. You know, I understand for international student it is not easy because you are far away from your family, from your friends, new country. But that's why you have to start early. You know, first six months you have better English. You already built your new resume. Go knock at the doors. You know, work for free. Do some uh, uh, work as a trainee. Work as uh, as a volunteer. You know, that's very important. So then you build your reputation, your network. Okay, and that's what happens. Those colleges that I showed you. 95% of the students get a job after graduation. 95%. What happened to the 5%? They were the ones taking the flight back home for vacation. Okay, we have only two minutes. No, okay. It's at two o'clock. Two o'clock? Okay. Uh, 지금의 질문은 요거, 요, 요 선물들을 제가 카일 교수님께 드리겠습니다. 그러면 나중에 Okay, you can use this for your team, okay? <웃음> 그렇게 하는 게 좋을 것 같고요. 제가 마지막으로 한 말씀만 드리고 이제 마치도록 하겠습니다. 그 말씀이 정말 와다. 그리고 지금 캐나다에 가면은 대학생들 많이, 워킹 할러데이도 많이 가시잖아요. 근데 취업을 하는 게 되게 사실 쉽지 않아요. 근데 저도 이렇게 경험하고 있어서 말씀을 드리고 마칠게요. 작년에 아까 동영상으로 보여드렸지만 4개월을 이제 저희 동호님, 저희 아이랑 미국을 여행하고 캐나다에 가서 이제 어떤 일할 수 있는 부분들은 없을지 찾아봤었어요. 그리고 제가 이제 저희 지인이 소개시켜줘서 10월이라는 회사에 저도 이제 가서 이제 노크를 한것 같아요. 그러니까 알고 간게 아니고요. 소개받아서 갔고 When I first met you, you didn't know me, right? 그러니까 Zero. 예, 처음에 만났을 때 아무도 몰랐고 그리고 저는 사실은 이런 회사인지도 잘 모르는 상태로서 갔었던 거예요. 가서 얘기를 했죠. 한국에서 왔고 교육 쪽에 저도 일을 하고 있고 저는 이제 예전에 회사를 또 다녔기 때문에 이런 것들도 좀 소개도 하고 이제 그랬었지만 이분도 사실은 한국에서 온 사람이 이렇게 하니까 잘 모르잖아요. 그렇기 때문에 어떻게 하면 좀 친해지고 좀할수 있을까 이제 그런 생각 들었어요. 그래서 매주 화요일에 갔어요. 시간이 되든 안 되든 일단 매주 화요일에 가서 뵙고 싶다. 그래서 일단 처음 만나고 다음 주도 시간 되냐 이제. 항상 저는 그렇게 하는 거예요. 미팅 한 다음에 다음 주 언제 시간 되시냐 또올수 있다 저는. 그러면 그때 이제 잡아놓고 다시 갔다가 다음 주에 또한번 만나. 그렇게 해서 한 다섯 번을 만났었어요. 그러니까 이분도 저에 대해서 이제 신뢰가 쌓이는 거죠. 그래서 아까 전에 얘기했던 것이 가장 중요한 게 본인이 이제 정말 사회는 기부했니그잖아요 내가 주는 것만큼 또 받을 수 있는 것처럼 그런 기회들을 본인이 찾아야 되고. 본인이 약간 열정을 가지고 이렇게 한다면 기회들은 얼마든지 있는 것 같아요. 근데 그거는 정말 누군가가 해줄 수 있는 게 아니고 본인이 스스로 해야 되는 거고 그런 것들을 옆에서 하셨던 분들이 있으면 조언을 얻고 그렇게 하시면 충분히 가능합니다. 거기 또 사람 사는 곳이기 때문에 그 열정을 가지고 뭔가 하겠다 그러는데 기회가 없을 수는 없잖아요. 다 있고요. 그리고 한국 사람들은 특히 한국 학생들은 그 다른 캐나다 분들에 비해서 제가 봤을 때 훨씬 더 부지런해요. 그리고 열정이 있고 그리고 똑똑 똑똑하고 그렇기 때문에 기회들이 다 많습니다. 오케이, so let's call it a day. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, we just have about five minutes left. I'm going.